the size of the cheaper of fire. 100%. And she's not celebrating Halloween. Good afternoon and welcome to the Governor's Interagency Advisory Council on Homelessness. Chair Tim Robb, would you like to wait a few more minutes to allow more council members to come in? Yeah, let's wait just a minute or two. I think we're we're getting close to critical mass. Okay, thank you. It looks like we might have close to enough folks to get started. Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the Governor's Interagency Advisory Council on Homelessness. This meeting has been publicly noticed in compliance with Nevada's open meeting law. Chair Tim Robb will call the meeting to order. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. It is 101. I'd like to call this March 21st meeting of the Nevada Interagency Council on Homelessness to order. We will now call the roll. Ms. Cooper. Thank you, Chair Tim Robb. I am here. Senator Dina Neal. Here. Assemblyperson Max Carter. Present. Deputy Director Emily Tesswoody. Here. Administrator Robert Thompson. Here. Administrator Stephen Acroft. Here. Director Lisa Maselli. Ms. Cooper, I think we have Colonel Mary Devine on that seat on the line. I'm here. Thank you. I will update that information. Lieutenant Christopher Garrell. Lieutenant Brandon Zirkel. Sheriff Jerry Allen. I'm here. Judge Mike Montero. Dr. Katrina Grisby Thedford. Present. And Judge Christy Craig. Chair Rob, we do have quorum. Fantastic. Always love when we make that threshold. That uh, means we get to have a meeting. So uh, let's see. We will close out agenda item number one and go into agenda item number two, public comment. No action may be taken upon a matter raised in public comment until it is a matter that has been specifically added to the agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes. If you're making public comment via phone, please call 1-775-321. 6111 and the meeting ID is 870-635-876 followed by pound. We are now open for public comment. Is there anybody on the line that would wish to make public comment? Ms. Cooper, do we have any written public comment that's been submitted? No, we do not. Okay. We'll give it just a minute to see if anybody's calling in on the phone. I 
OK, hearing no oh, looks like somebody on the phone just popped in, so maybe they're calling in for public comment. Let's see. Is the person with the phone number um, ending in eight five? Do they wish to make public comment? Maybe not. OK. Um, I think before we close out agenda item number two, public comment, do any of the new members wish to make an introduction of yourself? We have four new folks on the line, so I um, want to see if you want to take this opportunity to, to say hello and give us a little background on who you are. I'll, I'll jump in. Oh, I'm Mary Devine. I am the new director of veteran services. I've been on the job a whopping four days and I'm very excited to be here. And um, I think I look forward to what we what we do in our communities around this area of homelessness. So I'm pretty excited about this assignment. Thank you. Awesome. And I know we've talked about your passion for this work in the past, so yep. glad to have you on the team yep. and I'm excited, I'm excited to, to have you working with us on it. Deputy Director, would you like to go? So this. Oh, go ahead. This is uh, Dr. Katrina Grigsby. I don't know if I'm considered one of the four new um, <laughs> that you're talking about, but I think I was uh, accepted a few months ago. Um, so I sit on the uh, lived experience seat. I'm the executive director of Nevada Homeless Alliance and just grateful to be here and to be involved in conversations and learn more from you guys as well as, well as uh, share my perspective um, from a person with lived experience coupled with my education and professional um, knowledge um, as it relates to homelessness. So thank you for having me. Fantastic. We're glad to have you on the team and appreciate all that you bring to it. So. Thank you. Deputy Director, did you want to go next? Sure. Uh, my name is Emily Tuskeed. I am the new Deputy Director of Programs for the Department of Correction. I'm sitting in for Director Zarenda today. Um, I started in January, um, and I am really looking forward to working with all of you. Um, and um, our efforts are really focused on reentry at this point. And so I, you know, there's a lot of overlap here. So I'm really excited. Fantastic. Thank you for what you do and thanks for being on the team. Do either one of our legislators want to give an introduction? Um, this is. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry, Dina. Did I get nope. go okay. ahead? Okay. <laughs> this I'm Assemblyman Max Carter. I'm represent the east side of Las Vegas, the far east side, base of Sunrise Mountain and a little bit of Henderson. Um, I'm a third generation East Sider that is refuses, but that loves my quote unquote marginalized communities and just want to help and just want to help make our communities better. Awesome. Thank you so much, Assemblyman. We're excited to have you on here as well. Senator, would you like to go? Uh, that's the, I, I guess I'm still stuck on, you know, third generation East Sider, but I digress. Um, so I'm Senator Dina Neal. I've been in the Senate since 2020, been in the legislature on the assembly side since 2011. I have probably brought bills that have antagonized this group. So I had AB 74, which mandated that all of the cities work together to come up with a plan for homelessness, which then created SB 309, which basically took the Medicaid pre-tax dollars and was supposed to spend those towards homeless services or marginalized groups. And then in 23, brought the wonderful piece of legislation, SB 400, which was trying to ramp up street teams and have a more coordinated effect. And it was vetoed. So, <laughs> and that was $30 million. And so, now I'm on this group, so we'll see what I end up with in 25. <laughs> awesome, Senator. Well, thank you for all that you do, and we're happy to have you on the team as well. Um, I think with that, we can move into agenda item number three, which is discussion and possible approval of meeting minutes from our November 30th, 2023 um, meeting. 
Is there any discussion on the meeting minutes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. Does Steve Acroft move approval? We have a Robert second. Thompson second. Thank you both so much. We will move into a vote. All those in favor of approving the meeting minutes from November 30th, 23, say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. We can now move into, and, and actually we're gonna go a little bit out of order and I have some unfortunate news about agenda item number four. Unfortunately, Dana Searcy was not able to join us today to discuss the CARES campus, um, but hopefully they'll be able to join us soon um, on an upcoming meeting to discuss the awesome work that they're doing there. Um, and we will be taking agenda item number six over five, um, just to make sure that Michelle can get out of here on a, a tight deadline, so. Um, Michelle, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Chairman Rob. Um, council members, I appreciate the opportunity to present to you today. I am Michelle Fuller Hellauer. I am the owner, CEO, and chief strategist for Winged Wolf Innovations, and I am the chair for the technical assistance committee uh, for this board. So I would just like to give you an update on the activities of the technical assistance committee. We continue to meet monthly, and we are actively uh, working on creating the action plan that to accompany the statewide strategic plan. So the work is primarily happening in work teams that involve stakeholders from across the state in all of the COCs, our service providers, and the people that we serve. And the first draft will be compiled by the end of this month and our anticipation is that we will have a solid, uh, if not final draft to you, at least a or final action plan, at least a good solid uh, working draft for you by August, uh, so that uh, you and our legislators can will be able to use that action plan and the state strategic plan as you start uh, drafting bill drafts. Uh, for the next legislative session. Uh, we believe that the action plan will be uh, very informative and will be helpful. And there may be some slight tweaks to the actual strategic plan itself as we are gathering vital information across the state. Uh, but we are really excited about the work and we uh, hope that you are pleased with the work that's taking place throughout the state and in collaboration with the three continuums of care. I'm open for questions, but that ends my very concise report. Awesome. Thank you so much. And it's always so helpful to have the work that you guys do inform what we're we're discussing on these calls. Um, just for everybody's iteration on or consideration, um, can you define continuum of care and kind of what that works um, looks like on the ground for some of our newer folks? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> so the the continuum of care or COC is uh, it's designed or defined uh, by HUD, the United States Housing and Urban De Department of Housing and Urban Development, and it's a geographic area. Uh, so we have three uh, geographic areas defined within the state of Nevada. The Northern Nevada COC is really the boundaries of Washoe County. So it's considered the Reno Sparks Washoe County Continuum of Care, or we uh, we uh, call it the Northern Nevada COC. The Southern Nevada COC is the geographic area of the boundaries of the County of Clark and all jurisdictions therein. Uh, legally, it's called the Las Vegas Clark County COC. And then we have the balance of state or all the other uh, counties and the city of Carson. Uh, so that's uh, all 15 or 15 other, 14 other counties in the city of, of Carson is the rural Nevada COC. The COCs are responsible for planning uh, all home service delivery within their geographic area for operating, design, designating and operating their homeless management information services or system. So essentially our, our HMIS or CMIS, our community management information system, we use Clarity 
Uh, and all three continuums of care within the state of Nevada use the same system. We we all use Clarity uh, and we have open shared system. Uh, so we can that helps us to gather statewide data as long as you're entering the data within HMIS. Uh, but if you're entering the data in a, into another system like ELOX or or another system, we don't have access to that data. So there's a bifurcation of data. Uh, but but within the COCs and the data that's being entered in the one system, we have that. The COCs are also responsible for coordination of systems and operating coordinated entry system. Uh, that, that includes uh, being able to divert people out of the homeless services system, uh, as well as folks that are literally homeless, evaluating them with a one tool, uh, and we all use the same tool across the state, and then uh, assessing their them based on vulnerability and referring them to appropriate housing services. But as we know across the state, we don't have enough services, enough housing or enough housing uh, supported services to meet the need across the state. Does that? Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Um, it's always helpful to to get a refresher on that as well. Um, I think it's it's the amazing work, the boots on the ground, the people making things happen in homelessness um, is kind of how I think about it. And I appreciate all the work that you do in, in making sure that there's that coordination statewide and um, that we're making informed decisions. So really appreciate it. Is there any other questions for Michelle? OK, well, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I think with that, we can close out this agenda item and move into agenda item number five, um, a progress update on AB 310, uh, Administrator Aircroft. Oh, somebody have something? OK, Administr Administrator Aircroft, take it away. Uh, thank you, Chair Rob. Um, since there are so many new members, it's probably will behoove me to kind of give a recap of exactly what AB 310 is. Um, and that was, uh, it was passed in the last legislative session. And effectively it uh, provides uh, the division funding uh, for a program. And I'm just gonna kind of read the bill verbatim uh, uh, to develop, implement a supportive housing grant program for the purpose of awarding grants for the development of supportive housing and the provision of supportive housing services. And so they've identified four ways that that's done, and that's to procure and develop supportive housing, train and build the capacity of supportive housing uh, partnerships, fund the operation of that partnership, and analyze the progress of supportive housing in the state. And the intersection of this group with that particular law is that the division will consult with the membership of the Interagency Advisory Council on Homelessness to Housing uh, before approving any application for a grant. So you guys will have a voice um, as we move forward in this process um, to um, opine on the grants that will be submitted. So um, just to kind of, uh, again, take a step back as it's defined in this uh, language or in the bill language, supportive housing means subsidized housing that reduces barriers to retaining housing that are caused by a person's rental history, criminal history, and income through the provision of on-site and off-site supportive services that are designed to assist a person who has a dis disabling behavioral or physical health condition, or has experienced homelessness, or been at imminent risk of homelessness, or has been uh, un unnecessarily uh, institutionalized. Supportive services is defined as uh, social services, community support services, case management services, employment services, healthcare, behavioral health treatment. So this whole uh, litany of, of potential uh, services. So the division um, will be provided $32.2 million uh, of general funds. It's the first time in my recollection that the division actually has received general funds uh, for the support of any program. Um, and 
it's not funding the bricks and sticks, which is typically the place that we operate. It's it's uh, to be sort of a one shop stop for the division to work with the bricks and sticks developers and the supportive servicing uh, folks who are um, uh, looking for this funding. So we're working on drafting regulations, and once we get those regulations back from the LCB, Legislative Council Bureau, sorry, I probably shouldn't speak in acronyms, uh, Division will release these draft regulations in the program design for a public workshop. After the public workshop, the Division will be making any revisions deemed necessary and submit the regulations to LCB for uh, drafting and submission to the Legislative Commission. The goal of the division is to be able to open applications by July of 24, so here in the next few months, and make awards by September. Um, additionally, the division is in the final submission stages to create the new positions that were approved as part of AB 310, and we hope to hire uh, later this quarter, well, later in the, in the spring. A um, couple of things I want to make this group uh, aware of. Uh, each year, the division awards um, housing and urban development national housing trust funds to projects serving 30% AMI and below individuals and families. Uh, the selection criteria includes offering supportive services. We hope to kind of intersect those two funds, which would allow developers to apply for trust funds for their projects and then also supply apply for the supportive housing funds. Uh, for those projects. The second thing I'd like to mention is the division is also working to potentially fold in Section 811 grants as part of the application for supportive housing services. Um, Section 811 funds provide rental assistance for individuals with disabilities. We don't know exactly how that's going to work in this space. We, as I mentioned, we're, we're potentially looking at this. Um, so it, these funds are, are a bit of a challenge to um, disperse, uh, but uh, we hope to deploy these funds with uh, alongside the um, uh, items that will be uh, provided through applications in AB 310. Um, I don't have any more details on that right now. That kind of sums up my uh, presentation and be happy to answer any questions. Um, we will notify this group um, and then also our other partners uh, in this space uh, as to when public workshops will be held uh, for uh, the adoption of the regulations. But uh, um, I guess with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Administrator. Does anybody have any questions for him? OK. And and I would like to make a comment, um, if if I may, Chair, um, as was discussed previously in another meeting, but we have so many new members, it's probably worth a refresher. This will be a continual standing item on the agenda uh, for the interagency council uh, moving forward as we as we work through this process. So more to come from me every meeting. Perfect, and we appreciate it. Appreciate all the work that you guys do in the division as well. Um, I think that it's really important work and and it's very successful things happening in, in the world of housing. So thank you. Um, I think with that, we can close out agenda item number five and move into agenda item number seven, discussion of future agenda items um, for potentially April 25th of 2024. Does anybody have any topics they would like to discuss or groups they would like us to reach out to to see if they may be able to participate. Um, this is Dr. Katrina, um, Nevada Homeless Alliance here. Um, I don't know if I can request to do a presentation at the next meeting um, for Nevada Homeless Alliance, our um, progress report for 2023. Um, we're uh, we're, we're going statewide, and so I, we have a contract with uh, Washoe County or Northern Nevada COC for Lived Experience Advisory Board, as well as Southern Nevada for Lived Ex Consultants. Um, we hosted our second conference on ending homelessness in Reno last year, and our third annual conference, statewide conference, will be this year. So I think it'd be great to just um, 
uh, re-educate uh, everyone on this call as well as educate the new members of the work that Nevada Homeless Lines uh, does as it relates to homelessness and housing instability and the impact we're having. And um, I just wanna give props to Michelle uh, because at the last conference, um, they uh, took a poll of individuals who were in the room, over 300 people at UNR who wanted to be involved in those working groups to populate that strategic plan. And so I just think it's really vital that this group kind of knows the work that we do. Um, so if I'm out of line, I'm sorry, but I would love to be oh, on the agenda April 25th. That's absolutely <laughs> perfect, and we would love to have it. So um, I think that we can we can add that to the list. Thank you so much. Does anybody Great. else have any ideas? Uh, Chair Rob, this is Administrator Acroft again. Was the intent to invite uh, Ms. Searcy back to talk about that for the April meeting? Yes, sir. I think uh, as their calendar kind of aligns with our calendar, um, hopefully they'll be able to make that presentation um, as soon as possible. So. Yes. Thank you. Senator Neal, is there any way, and it doesn't have to be next month, um, maybe even May or June, can we have a, you know, a breakdown of the homelessness bills that have actually come through and failed and, and a conversation about what people didn't like about them? <laughs> so it can be narrowed mm. to what should be the policy. So I'm not I'm not sure if this body is able to advocate one way or the other on legislation, but I think if the DAG is agreeable to it, I don't see um, a challenge with um, bringing up some of the topics that have been discussed in legislation in the past. I don't if know. Just, if, this is Ryan from the AG. If it's just informational only, it's fine. OK, and that sounds good to me. So will we be inviting someone to do that or Senator Neal, will you be doing that presentation? Um, I could talk offline with the chair about what that would look like, but it wouldn't be next month. Okay. Yep, nope, that sounds great. Thank I think, you. Senator, we can discuss offline. Maybe it's something that we uh, invite somebody from LCB to give us a a rundown of some of the bills that have come up in the past and then we can go from there if that sounds good to you. Makes sense. Awesome. Are there any other topics anybody would like to discuss on an upcoming meeting? OK, hearing none, I think we can close out agenda item number seven, move into agenda item number eight, public comment. This is the second period of public comment. No action may be taken upon a matter raised under this item uh, and unless it has been specifically added to the agenda. Um, comments are limited to three minutes. If you're making public comment via phone, please call 1-775-321-6111. The meeting ID is 870-635-876 followed by pound. We're now open for public comment. Is there anybody on the teams that would like to make public comment? Yes, Katrina, Dr. Katrina is doctor is a new title, so you kind of get used to saying it. So um, Nevada Homeless Lines was um, granted the opportunity to work with the Nevada Department of Corrections on a, a six month, no cost um, pilot program. Um, our goal, um, one of my goals in my research is to stop or halt the inflow into homelessness. Um, from um, institutions, including uh, jails, prisons, uh, mental health facilities, substance use facilities. So we've been working with the Nevada Department of Corrections and have the approval to go into two uh, locations, Florence McCurr and Southern Desert. And that six months is coming to an end. And so um, we have been able to successfully meet with individuals who are expiring their sentence, that's our target, um, to divert them from being discharged into homelessness when they have no social or financial support. And so um, I'll be, uh, just wanted to share that because I've never met Emily. So hi, Emily. Um, so just want to thank the NDOC and, and our law enforcement partners for allowing us to do that work and it's very impactful and we would like to continue. I'll include that information in my presentation next month as well. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Doctor. Is anybody else that wishes to make public comment? Is anybody joined on the phone? Doesn't look like it. And I'm assuming there's been no written public oh. comment. Oh, go ahead. I do have another, if I can make two public comments. So Michelle mentioned the coordinated entry system. And so in Southern Nevada, I am currently part of a short-term team that's working on a more, uh, like a smaller, shorter assessment to, um, to look at the vulnerability of individuals for our coordinated entry uh, housing assessments to make sure the most vulnerable are getting access to housing and services that they are needed. And so our goal is to have that short term um, uh, project completed by April 1st. And then we're gonna move into a long-term team to redo our uh, our chat, our, uh, our homeless assessment, um, um, assessment. And so, um, Maybe in the future, once that short term um, uh, assessment is completed, we can talk more about having our HUD techno assistants maybe join the meeting and give a presentation on the why, what the methodology was, how it was working out. I think it'd be great for individuals on this call to kind of understand why we changed it, why we think the new one is going to be better, and how it would impact our service providers as well as people experiencing homelessness um, to in a greater a uh, more positive way moving forward. So I just want to let people know that that's coming up. Awesome, sounds great. Thanks for all the awesome work that you guys are working on. I think uh, our, our state's better off for the, the efforts you're putting forward and thank you for what you do. Is there anybody else that wishes to make public comment? Okay, I think with that we can make a movement to adjourn. I think. Move to adjourn. Awesome. Thank you, Assemblyman. I think uh, we can move to a vote without a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Thank you all very much and look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.